first one I want to know about is what about wake surfing with crocodiles in Panama? I, I read that and I went, whoa, this girl rocks. Tell me about that. So I was on a surf trip in Panama and um, the surfers were soup. The surf was great, but the surfers were kind of aggressive in the lineup. And oh yeah, my travel buddy and I were thinking of moving on. And he came back to me one day after dinner, um, I was reading and he said, I just met this guy with like a 70 foot trimaran. And I talked him into sailing up and down the coast, looking for surf, as long as we pay for gas, are you in? And I said, yeah, I'm definitely in. And then we found a couple other surfers to join because we wanted to share the gas cost. Um, <laughs> and a couple of days in, we got pulled over by Panamanian militia. It turns mm. out our captain never called in us as passengers and he didn't have papers for his boat. No. And so we were detained at gunpoint. Um, we were pulled into a bay that was hidden. So anybody going up and down the coast would never have found Ooh. us. Um, and they had bulletproof vests and they had guns, machine guns. And we realized they were trying to confiscate the boat if possible. Ah. So the big boss left and he left us standing on the bow in the sun. Um, and my friend spoke fluent Spanish and he started joking around with them. And the longer we sat there, the more he asked them if they wanted a cold beer and, you know, saying, you know, you want one, you know, you want one. And so he <laughs> got them to drink a beer. And then he told them that I surfed and that I would surf behind their boat in a bikini if they would let us go. Really? Um, the boat turned out to be a Colombian drug running boat that they'd confiscated. It had four huge engines. <laughs> I didn't know about the crocodiles, but I was dying to go surfing. I was so hot. I wanted to get off the bow of that boat. I said I would do it. Um, and so we did it. I went on the swim platform and they threw a line over and I insisted that my friend go on the boat yeah, so that I wasn't idea. being dragged off alone. Yeah. Uh, and they took me wake surfing and I got up right away and I surfed. And then eventually they rubbed the engines too fast. So I no. let go. And I was sitting there waiting for them to come back and they came back really fast and they were all screaming. And I thought they were screaming because I was surfed so well. It turns out they yeah. were screaming because there were crocodiles everywhere and they thought I knew and they thought I just did not care. Ah. And they let us go. They were like, it is loca, loquicia, you're crazy. And they let my friend and me go and the others got held there for another week. Whoa. So- yeah. What's the lessons that you pull from that story? Incredible story, by the way. What do you learn from that? I love calling meetings like that divine appointments. And nice. so we could go into them being terrified, but, but it's what the universe handed us. And so then we made it fun and then we made friends and then we had a great time and it's a great story. And when we left, I was laughing. My friend was laughing. The gunslinging Panamanians were laughing. I mean, it was... It was a divine appointment by the universe, I think. Yeah, no, I love that. Another way I, I think to look at it is this idea that challenges, when they presented to us, are couldn't be opportunities, right? Like you're saying, and it could actually be divine depending on you know how you approach it, right? And right, and that's right. really cool. 